You know, looking at a man that's fresh out of state prison after a decade. You're also looking at a man that's destined for greatness never to come back. Take a walk on us. Ten toes down, never ran, never fold. Talking to the bros like we gotta break the moon. Then we gon' shine like that glitter and that gold. I still be checking if they following. DM cool, but I'm pulling up and hollering. Different clothes, why you think she pulling up and hollering? We had a long night, now she going back to modeling. Trying to make it out, watching everything I spend. Know that you could lose your life every time you bend. Just because he throw it up, that don't mean that he your friend. Back like I never left, fresh about that ten. Long days, cold nights, stuck up in the pen. He a rat. If he told once, he do it again. Shorty said she love you. Shorty know how to pretend. She just trying to survive. You a means to. Shut it out. Fresh out. With the King Smart. We'll be in Harlem. One, two, fifth. You know, this the East Coast fresh out. So we wanted to get the people a glimpse. Or the East Coast. Right now we in Harlem, man. Shout out to Harlem, man. Billionaire barbershop. Much appreciation and love to the King Ron for allowing us to use this iconic space. I like to let individuals introduce themselves. So before we go any further, Smart, I like the people introduce yourself to the people. Oh, um, yeah. So it's your boy Smart, um, rapper, boxer, entrepreneur, um, motivational speaker, mm -hmm. um, actor. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, uh, revolutionary, mm -hmm. community activist, and uh, soon to be deputy mayor. Okay, talk that talk, man, and that's why I, that's why I'm gonna enjoy this interview, man, because I was watching the brothers' footage from before, very articulate, very sharp, and we gonna have a good conversation, man. You know, prison, prison is the place where everybody wanna know what happens, but nobody wants to go. So first and foremost, let's start off with our prison talk segment prison stories like if you could share one story from behind the wall with our viewers something that make them laugh something that may make them cry <laughs> something deep something powerful whatever it is what story would that be from your experience oh but before we even go there um how long were you incarcerated um wow. um for what yeah let's, so, let's start there so i had um robbery weapons possession assault um I did two bids, total of like 10 years, um, and I was in juvenile and in prison, and the crazy thing about like juvenile, like I remember being in, I remember being in like Highland and Harlem Valley and Tryon, right, and they had these, it was crazy because they gave us laces, so if you had white laces, you was orientation, you had blue laces, you was adjustment, you had yellow laces, you was transition. You had green laces, you was honest, and you, they allowed you to walk around the facility. So we thought to make honors was a privilege, but they was just grooming you for free movement. Mm. Cause you know, when you leave out the max and you go to medium, you get free movement, right? So, um, I think what I want to say about prison is, it's, it's, it's boring, you know, it's boring. I didn't have any, you know, I didn't have any problems, I didn't have any fun, I miss family. Um, I don't have no real, you know, no good things to say about prison other than it gave me time to read, learn, and develop myself. And mm. I thought like being gangster, like, you know, and, and let me be clear, for New York penitentiary, the two highest levels of gangster is either the graveyard or Southport Box. So I made it to Southport Box. So I'm sitting in the hole for two years. So I cut somebody. I'm going crazy out of my mind. I'm beating on the walls, talking to myself, fishing on a tear. I mean, it was not. If it was nothing, it was nothing um, enjoyable about prison. So, what what story I was share from prison is you don't think about all the things you could have did differently until you're sitting in that cell. And you don't really realize who really loves you until you're sitting in that cell. It's the closest thing to being buried alive. Mm. It's the closest thing to being buried alive. And everything becomes like crystal fucking clear. So if I could share any, any information about um, prison, it would be, don't go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't go. And if you're doing crime, 
It's a lot of motherfuckers that went to the law library when they got 20, 30 years. If you in the street and you doing dirt, I strongly suggest visit the law library. Know the citizen, like know what you're gonna get before you even get charged with anything. Um, have a paid lawyer or retainer. Um, yeah, that's pretty, you know. So, so, pretty, you know so, I mean? so, let me touch on that right quick because the first time I ever been to the law library when I was behind the wall, yeah. right? But they have those in the streets. Yeah, I was trying to get a, yo, and I was trying to get a VFO. Mm -hmm. Cause I, <laughs> yeah, cause I'm like, yo, you know, cause we heard the, you know, that was just something we heard, like, okay, I could probably get it, cause I was young, so I was hopefully, I was trying to get a YO, but, um, I shot somebody, mm -hmm. so they didn't, I couldn't get the VFO even though I was still young, so, yeah, but it, it just, I remember really trying to go to the law library to figure out my case when. It, if I would have been doing that type of shit before I even got caught, I probably would have been better off. Absolutely. So how how old were you when you went in? Oh man, the first time first time I went in, um, I was eleven. I was eleven. I was eleven. I was eleven. Um, I was in a group home. I was in Geller House. Um, and caught a I beat a kid up. I was too young. They couldn't really they couldn't really put me nowhere. Um, they put me, they had me in Crossroads, then from Crossroads, they put me, I, I, I stabbed somebody with like a little, um, a fucking, what we should do? The toothbrush, we used to be on the, mm -hmm. be on the radiator all night, mm -hmm. trying to make it banger. Mm -hmm. So I, I stabbed somebody in, in Crossroads, they put me to the barge, shit was crazy, you know what I mean? So that was where it was like, it got real for me, because it was like, so the barge was like this boat, like this big ass fucking boat, everybody in it grown. So it was crazy because it, I was just like, yo, that situation was crazy because it was like, I'd never seen no shit like that. Being on a boat, having a cold craft, taking them cold ass showers, you know? I never had no, like I always knew how to fight. I never had no, I never got punked or nothing in jail. So I didn't experience being a, uh, a victim in jail. Mm -hmm. So that's what kind of led me going to prison because I didn't really understand like, prison, you know what I'm saying? Like, so from the barge, as I got older, from there, I went to C-74, and they was calling us Animal Lessons. So we had Five Upper, One Main House of Pain, where, you know, we beat niggas up for the phone, making niggas dance and play Macarena, you know what I mean? Um, you know, we got to fight for a chair. It's Rikers. It's Rikers, Rikers Island, yeah, mm -hmm. C-74. They called it Animal Lessons. So that was like, you know, the prison. When you too young to go to prison, they throw you there mm -hmm. for the kids, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Um, then from there, I got released. Um, and I just remember, I remember being like, so out of my mind. Like I was always high, I don't smoke no more. I was always high, drinking and shit like that. Then I caught my case. And then my, uh, from there, I went to um, Comstock. I do want to touch on something you said, right? Animal lessons. You know, that's a regular term, yeah. right? But <laughs> now, right? Yeah. Like what's your pers what's your perspective on that term? When I'm calling us that, right? But it's talking about adolescence. You know what it was because I because I was an animal lesson, right? Mm -hmm. What it was is I ain't have no mother, I ain't had no father. Everything we everything was glorified. It became a trophy. So to cut somebody was a trophy. Stab somebody was a trophy. Break a nigga jaw was a trophy. To have a phone was a trophy. We this was this was gladiator school. Mm -hmm. So it was no different from being in Rome. Who you don't know how if it's 32 kids on this on the cell block, everybody tough. House I was in, everybody was tough. But only three niggas gonna lock out. So you wanna so in your mind frame, you like, you know what, I gotta be the toughest. Mm -hmm. So y'all lions, I gotta be a fucking werewolf. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think it's just young kids come from broken homes, um, confused, misguided, not having a way, and you just you put us all in the same spot. We're gonna go crazy. We're gonna go crazy, bro. I threw 190 on the kid. Just cuz. Feel me? I pissed in the bottle, smacked it with the bottle. That was just fun. It was like we was just mad. It was really I think if I if I reflect on it, 
I think it was a lot of self hate. Because mm. it wasn't no white kids there. It mm. wasn't no Chinese kids there. It was just Spanish and blacks. Kids that look like us. Yeah, you know what I mean? So I think when I hear the term animal lesson, I think it's just survival instinct. You know, like you put us in a situation, you put certain people in a situation. I didn't know I was like this, bro. I remember going to Rikers Island, right? And they got us all in the holding cell. So they gave us this paper. And they go, yo, you know, you gonna take the Patakis. I said, I'm not taking these. Orange slippers. I'm like, listen, bro, I'm keeping my sneakers. No, they're gonna, nah, I'm keeping my sneakers. So I see a kid get punched in the face and they take his sneakers. So they asked me, yo, what size you wear? I just popped off. Fuck you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I didn't know, it's just, I seen it happen to him. It's not gonna I, happen to me. It's not gonna happen to me. Oh, all right. Yeah, 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 fighting for the phone. All right, cool. So the first person I see on the phone, I'm, I'm, I'm fixing them. So it's just really, it was survival. It wasn't really nothing cool. It wasn't really trying to be gangster. It was like, this is the rules that we playing by. Fuck it. And then we adapt. And then it becomes, it becomes habitual. Then you become an animal. You accept mm. that. You accept the CEO coming to your cell, trying to fight you, grown ass men. Yo, yo, my first experience, like really fighting somebody, was a, was a, was a CEO. You know what I'm saying? It was a CO. Like it was just this shit he used to do. Everybody that everybody that wanted to be on a team, you had to fight the CO. You know what I mean? He knocked my tooth loose. My, my whole my whole bottom tooth was knocked loose. Police knocked it out. Knocked it out. Closed my eye. I'm a kid fighting a grown ass man in a cell, bleeding for two days. No family, nobody know. Just so I could get out to be on a team. They're like, yeah, I, I lock out. So you could be accepting. Yeah, so we thinking, no, mind you. They talking about that story about that guy. I don't know what homie name was when Jay Z was talking about. We went through way more worse shit than that. Khalif Brown. Yeah, we went through. Yo, bro, listen, bro. Like, it it was just really. And I try not to talk about prison so much because I left that mind frame. But I remember being an animal. I remember in having it was like a thrill. You know what I'm saying? So when I hear animal lessons, it's just like. Fuck man, like you take us, you take these kids, and we kids, bro. We kids. Babies, we fucking kids. We should be getting hugged and Christmas gifts and all that shit. We ain't getting none of that. So it's just survival, man. So when I hear that, I, I hear survival instinct. We survive. You go to another house, it's 30 niggas in there, and they like, yo, you ain't getting on the phone. Well, y'all gonna have to wash me. I gotta smoke. I don't get <laughs> I'm getting on the phone. And you fighting two for, just to make a phone call. Just to communicate with your family. Well, you like new fire, I'll get on this phone, B. Cause I can't, cause if I don't get on this phone, what you gonna deal with? You gonna deal with niggas throwing piss on you? You gonna deal with niggas trying to make you eat shit? You gonna deal with niggas trying to make you wash your they drawers? You gonna now nah, I'd rather die, bro. So we gonna have to get it, you gotta have to get it in. I don't shit. Know what I mean? Absolutely. And then you just adapt from there, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, animal lessons, I just hear survival, man. And it's fucked up because nobody talks about it. You know how many kids got broken jaws? And had to, and he left him in a cell for like two weeks, and they jaw healed wrong. Mm. Like for real, like they jaw healed wrong, like they deformed. This kids, it's grown men right now that got their jaw broke on Rikers Island, that they faces deformed because they got no hospital treatment. This kids right now that got detached retinas. I know I broke a kid eye orbit one time. You know what I'm saying mm -hmm. they put that nigga in a cell. They put him in a cell. We fought for a chair. We fought for a chair, bro. I broke his eye socket. This whole shit bleeding out his eye. They not calling no doctor. Go on your cell. Go on your cell and, and, until it heal. So really like the adults don't, adults don't care about you. Nah, nobody. Nobody cares That's about you. That's why they call it animal lessons. Nobody care. And then what happened, you become hardened. You become hard. And then when you get out, this is how I went to prison. Because when I, when I got out, I didn't have no family. So you already like super like whatever. So when you get out, you coming, you coming back to a society that one is designed to destroy you. You don't have no family that understand. We got post. That's post traumatic stress, my nigga. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. post what? Heavy trauma. You, yo, bro, but we don't even know we in trauma. We don't even know about PTSD at the time. We don't know. You 15, 14. What I know? I stabbed three niggas. I stabbed the kid one time in his neck. Shit gushing out crazy. Like I cut two niggas. Yo, you, you, you see all this, but you accept it. You become desensitized. It becomes regular to us. Word. And then when you come home, you don't realize that the, the repercussions are higher now. Mm -hmm. So you thinking it's just all good. Yeah, I'm going to get this one and nine. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely. So yeah, so animal lessons, I just hear like um, survival. 
That's what it was. Survival. I was a good kid, bro. I was a good kid, bro. I wasn't supposed to be doing none of that shit, bro. I wasn't supposed to be none of that. I wasn't supposed to stab nobody. I was none of that shit, bro. But you got to do what you got to do, bro. You going to be a wolf or you going to be a sheep, my nigga. That's it, B. You know what I mean? So that's just what it is. So, yeah. Shout out to Animal Lessons, man. And that just shows how resilient we are as black. Let me go. Cause talk, talk to the these mother, let me tell you something, bro. All these niggas, it was no LGBTQ, it was no nothing, or it was no none of that, bro. Either you thorough or you not, bro. Shit, you a wolf or you a sheep, bro. You heard? It ain't nothing. It wasn't no in between, bro. So it's like, for 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 for, for me to survive, for me personally, right? For me to survive that and come out with my sanity, it's a miracle. Cause I know a lot of young kids that never got out of that mindset. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, so when I hate animal lessons, it strikes a chord. It's like, cause I know, now that I'm older, more wise, more mature, I know that situation was fucked up, bro. I know it. I remember this kid, right? I remember this kid, we used to call him Pincushion, right? Big kid, Brolic, right? Bro, he must have got stabbed like 200 times a day. We used to stab him. It's crazy shit, bro. We oh, everybody. We used to just stab him every day. Like, stab him, like, for real. It's crazy shit in the world. Lock him in a cell, we should be stabbing him every day. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, other kid, I told you, I threw the 190 on the nigga. I threw the 190 on him. For the viewers, 190. It's like a hot, the cool, like, it's like 190 degrees. It's like a hot pot. Like, you get coffee, you know what I'm saying? Water. Like, boiling water, like, coffee, boiling water. Like, the CO got a, a, a hot pot, and you, you turn that shit on, it's coffee, and you grab it and you throw it in the nigga face. And I watched the nigga's skin come off his face, bro, as a kid. All because we just, we just destructive. We just, it's just destructive. It's who could be the most brutal. That's what Animal Lessons used to be. Who could be the most brutal? That's it. And whoever is the most brutal and ruthless, those are the ones who, who rise to the crop. They get the phone, you get the crib, you lock out when you want, you get the frosted flakes. But look what we doing all this for. A bowl of cereal, mm -hmm. To get out my cell when I want. 10 minute phone call. And phone calls. We're mutilating each other. <laughs> and we mutilating each other, bro. Mm -hmm. You understand know what I'm saying? Like, and it stick with you. Cause you don't, like, even to this day, I still gotta respect when somebody tell me no. You heard? Cause you know, you're first instigate, nigga, what? No what? No what? You mean? Listen, bro, listen, I don't want tomatoes on my sandwich. No. I don't know, puppy. You know, you. Yo, homie, listen, bro. You, you know, it's that, you know, it's that confrontational thing that we have to learn. Somebody bumped me on the street, but don't say, listen, bro, listen, you ain't gonna say, excuse me, bro. Pardon me, yeah. Now, I'm ready to hit you. De even to this day, I still gotta accept when somebody says no. And I don't mean no, like, oh, we're gonna, we gonna uh, be pedophiles. You know, women yeah. can tell us no. We're talking about when a man, confrontational, like alpha That's males amazing. clashing like this. That's the institutionalized shit that happens when you go through them, when you go through the system as a kid. You fighting for cookies. I didn't even like, even before Rikers Island, we talking about Crossroads Horizons. Mm -hmm. Pyramid. Pyramid is the downstate for New York for kids. Mm -hmm. Like before you go to prison, you gotta go to downstate. You go to downstate for like two months, they get your classifications, they basically programming. I got beat the fuck up in downstate because I was not trying to let a nigga bend me over and cough. I said, what? I'm not bending over nothing. Police telling you to bend over and cough. Yo, bro, they, um, yo, they, they bruised my ribs. Mm. Cause I wasn't with it. I'm what? I'm bent over cough where? What? Nah. You want to protect your man? Yeah, bent over cough what? Then I didn't want to get a haircut. So after I got beat up, I went to the box. Cause they was shaving you. They yo shit crazy. So they want you to take a shower. First of all, they put you in a shower. When you're in downstate, it's a hundred people. Picture you being a bookings and they like, yo, take your clothes off, you wanna take a shower. What? Then they trying to put um what's that shit they give you? They put this lie shit on you. Like, it's like, yo, bro, it's like, it's like slavery, bro. I'm not doing, I'm not with none of that. So I get beat the fuck up. Then they, they put you in a barber chair, they, like, they want to cut your hair. I'm not cutting nothing off, bro. Now you're going to the box because you won't get a haircut. So you beat up, bruise, you go into the box, and you know they violating your food. They violating your food. You can tell it's been spitting, you can tell, mm. but you so hungry, you got to eat it. Like, all right, fuck it. Know what I'm saying? Shit, this shit, this shit crazy. So... This is all the shit that we go through in this system. It's modern day slavery. And and, and I'm stressing the fact, cause I never seen nobody talk about this. Like from like, a lot of niggas be lying about going to prison, bro. I ain't never seen, I'm talking about from 
from group homes, drug programs, juvie, to prison, to max, to medium, I could, I've only seen two Chinese people, bro. Mm. Two Chinese people. Two. Bruce Lee don't break the law, nigga. You know what I'm saying? This shit is really, this shit is systematic, bro. You feel me? You gotta see what's going on. So a lot of crimes that we commit, my first, yo, bro, listen, they gave me 18 months. Bro, I was 11 years old. How they give me 18 months for an assault? They gave me 18 months. They was get, they was losing niggas in the system. At that time, like, they was putting niggas, it's what people don't talk about. They was putting kids in the system, because you had to have, remember I told you, you had to have a, um, you had to score out. The so, laces and all that. Yo, you didn't fucking score. If you, this shit's crazy. If you didn't score out to get released, they could hold you. So how they geek your family? They geek your family to sign a pins warrant over. So they they tell you your family signed your they signed my mother signed her rights over to the system. You now I'm saying so now they got you, nigga. So now you gotta score to get out. My nigga, they make it damn near impossible, bro. So I got I know friends. I got personal friends of mine that went into the system at 11 years old and because of a pins warrant got out like at 35, over their first charge, bro. Over, I'm talking about their first charge. This is shit people don't talk about. I'm talking about their first charge. They never got out the system. They couldn't score out. And they just kept transferring them. And then, while you're in there, you get frustrated. You cut somebody, you do something, new charge. Ah, new charge, new charge, new charge. Before you know, you got a 20 year bid and you're only 11 years old. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's that one mm -hmm. of the life shit they used to give niggas. Mm -hmm. It's so much shit that we go through as blacks. That nobody talks about. Every nigga that go to jail, it wasn't they fault, bro. I did listen, it wasn't I'm a, I'm gonna keep it hundred with you. Yeah, I broke the law. My mom smoked crack, bro. I ain't had no father, I ain't had no family, I ain't have nothing. My first charge, my first charge, I was eleven. Nigga, I did five years. Bro, at eleven. I did 24 months in Highland because I couldn't score out. Got released, went to an evening report center, got violated. I get violated, did another 18 months. Bro, keep word, I'm 11, the starting point. So, this shit is designed to take you. Mm -hmm. I go in at 11. I get the pins warm. How am I doing? Yo, bro, how they got me doing three years, my nigga, at 11? How you put me in a barge before I turned 12? I'm around, I wasn't supposed to be there. So when they see like, and they, and they it's like, they groom you. Once they see you a certain way, they throw you with the, with the, with the delts. That's why it's called the animal lessons. And if you was cutting too many niggas, they'll put you in the beacon. You 14, they put you in the adults for like a month. Scare you up. This, but it don't because, nigga, I don't get care you about ready. no old nigga. Yeah. What you talk? What you think? Oh, because you old, I'm a, nah, bro. Nah, bro. Like, I'm going to poke you up the same way I'm going to poke up this young nigga, bro. I'm going to poke you up faster because you going to think, ah, because I'm young. No. <laughs> I'm worse, nigga. So then you go there for a month. They, it, they make you, it's like they make you crazy. They make you monsters. So we still gotta be like, you know what I mean? Like even now, like I be trying, like one thing about me is like, I never look that way, but when I reflect, it could bring it out. And I be in certain situations where I have to, that's why boxing for me is so beautiful. You know what I'm saying? But make a long story short, this system is designed to destroy us, bro. And we don't have, if you come from broken homes, people gotta watch interviews like this and understand it starts in the house. Mm. Take, give the, the kid, needs nurturing. The mother represents the physical self-esteem for the male, the father for the daughter. So mothers and fathers, both in the home dynamic is so important in terms of early childhood development, development. And to avoid prison. Because once you get anywhere near the system, they program you. It's too, it's too much. So if you're coming in with your own thoughts and your own understanding, if you don't, yeah. you're soaking up that whole mentality and that whole way of life. Yeah. 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 Pretty much. Major sense. Uh, we're going to tap in. We got your listen, man. This interview already been crazy. 
it's been everything this build been everything i expected it to be in more we over here building with the king smart fresh out so rich <laughs> they gonna understand this talk man look yo came into this world piss poor but god had a plan I was throwing up, middle fingers in my sonogram No food in the fridge, bunch of roaches on the floor First words nigga was, I want more I was in Southport, headphones in the wall Waiting for the Baker boys, Bucky half Spanish So I'm sleeping with my razor boy, wreck in the morning Waiting for the door to click, just send a kite for the bud You gotta order it, fishing on the tier Late night, watch the porter snitch, cause he ain't get a magazine Cops took all the whips so I cut him cause he ratted Yeah, now the turtles is coming Can't flush the blicky Cause they put a freeze on the plumbing All black metal shield, yeah, the demons is coming Sat in a cell, a lot of niggas laying in the dirt Shooting to live, you won't see my face on a the shirt They gon' give me a jury before a eulogy But I be on the money chase, missing with the foolery Been hustling since eighth grade, running from the truancy Eat what you kill, had to learn the laws of the land Fuck, wait, break it down, put it all in the pan. Block clicking, nigga, fiends on the phone. What else? And if we ain't talking money, dog, leave me alone. Mm -hmm. It be the ones that judge you, that won't put food in your stomach. I'ma stop when the bills keep coming, you motherfuckers. I'm talking to a deaf man. Scale on the table, bunch of baggies in my left hand. ACG boots, sweats in the headband. Yeah, I fear God, but I ain't waiting for Jesus. Got Poppy on the line, like, give me some pieces. Never sell your soul, ten toes down, never ran, never fold Talking to the bros like we gotta break the mold Then we gon' shine like that glitter and that gold